Contacted from Impen, and he's going to be speaking about BPS states, Torus links, and why character dynamics. Oh, thank you, thank you. Um, so it's a great pleasure to be here at this fabulous meeting. Um, I'm going to talk about uh, a project on understanding the topology of character varieties for Riemann surfaces. And uh, I want to apologize from, uh, from the beginning that there will be a lot of formulas. Um, but just the nature of the beast, uh, uh, that's how this, this uh, uh, subject uh, uh, is recorded. Um, so uh, here is uh, a brief outline. Uh, first of all, it's a joint work with Emmanuel Diaconesco and Ron Dunagi. And what we're doing is we're trying to find some string theoretics, some physics approach to understanding the topology of character varieties. And what we're really uh, uh, aiming to do is to compute Poincaré polynomials and in fact a slight refinement of the Poincaré polynomials, the mixed Poincaré polynomials of character varieties. And uh, the goal is uh, to actually produce a formula for those polynomials and explain how this formula arises by using some kind of uh, uh, physics duality. And in fact, uh, we, we do produce a formula which generalizes uh, conjectures uh, of, uh, that people have come up with uh, coming from some arithmetic considerations in the case of Jose Omerep and Wong and from some uh, 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 different physics considerations in the case of Schender, Truman, and Zaslo. Say it again. Can we prove it? Yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll say what, 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 what's happening, but uh, uh, so yeah, so the, the, the story is that we are going to pro produce a complete conjectural formula uh, computing the mixed Poincaré polynomial of wild character varieties by using some sequence of geometric constructions and some either geometric conjectures or physics conjectures. Uh, some specializations of that formula because there are a lot of uh, grading parameters in the formula so you can set those parameters equal to one to zero to infinity so some specializations of that formula you can actually prove geometrically um, by, say, using the Weyl conjectures. Uh, and some instances of the formula for low ranks and low number of poles, you can also prove geometrically by using localization. Uh, but the general formula is wide open. And so before I jump into the story, let me just say, so this is... Uh, 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 this, this um, question of understanding the topology of character varieties. So these are representations of the fundamental group of a Riemann surface, uh, maybe with punctures or with boundary, uh, into a complex reductive group. So this is uh, typically an affine algebraic variety, very singular, uh, but it has very interesting geometry and very interesting topology. And what you want to do is you want to understand that topology in some explicit manner. So you want to write down a cell of decomposition or um, maybe write some explicit collection of cycles generating the cohomology, compute the Euler characteristic, compute the Poincaré polynomial, or any, <coughs> any shadow of those that you can imagine. And it's a big uh, uh, field. Uh, it, it, it has many inputs from many different uh, uh, subjects, and there are answers. Uh, um, so, uh, because the character varieties, they come in, in, in different flavors, the answers tend to be quite complicated and different in the different flavors. So, if you look at the representations of the fundamental group of a compact Riemann surface, already there, the general, so there is a conjectural formula for the Poincaré polynomial of the character variety, for any reductive group and any compact Riemann surface, uh, but the formula is still conjectural. Uh, so some cases for, uh, say, uh, groups of, of type A have been proven by using the vague conjectures, but in general the formula hasn't been proven. Um, and then you can look at Riemann surfaces with boundaries, and then you have to specify what kind of 
boundary behavior you're requiring of your representations. Uh, so you could just look at plain algebraic representations, or you could look at representations with uh, 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 anchored uh, uh, behavior uh, around the boundary. And then the algebraic geometric incarnations of those representations are subtypes of uh, bundles with flat connections. And uh, the analytic theory of those flat connections uh, may be or may not be captured by the topology. So if the flat connections have regular singularities, uh, then the, the behavior of the moduli space is completely captured by the representations. Uh, but if they have irregular singularities, then it's not. You need geometric data. So understanding the topology now becomes a more complicated question because you need to specify this boundary data. And so for representations with time singularities, you again can write a complete conjectural formula. And in fact, there is a physics uh, derivation of that formula very similar to what I'm doing here. So this is a work we did with Diagonescu and Donaghi maybe six years ago. Uh, and again, that formula is only proven in, in, in some special cases, but the general case is not proven. Uh, uh, and the wild case is the case that I'm, so, so the case with irregular singularities <laughs> is the case that I'm going to talk about today. And that's actually much more complicated because, as I said, it's not uh, a moduli problem that's controlled by the topology. So uh, you need to do uh, some uh, seriously new work in order to give an answer. Okay, so that's enough about the general introduction. So here is the, the flowchart description of what's the strategy. So we want to understand the wild character varieties. Uh, so this will be, oops, what happened? So this will be uh, 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 some components of the moduli space of representations of Riemann surfaces with punctures. And the way we're going to understand the topology is we're going to write that moduli space of representations as a moduli space of some Leary algebraic geometric data, which will be parabolic Higgs bundles on the Riemann surface with irregular singularities and some uh, um, data at the singularities. And then, so this, this is actually something that Hodge theory gives you, uh, and it's, it's not new but it's a, a first dictionary of translation that you need to, uh, 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 to employ. And once you have an interpretation in terms of these irregular parabolic Higgs bundles, you can rewrite the same moduli problem as actually a moduli problem in a completely different context, a moduli problem for shifts on a Calabi-Out trifold. Huh? Well, I'll, I'll say. Uh, uh, so it's some actually very boring non-compact Calabi out trifold that's manufactured out of the Riemann surface. Um, but yeah, so you can rewrite the moduli space as a moduli space of shifts on a Calabi out trifold. And again, it can try to use now the geometry of the Calabi out trifold to understand the topology of that moduli space. That doesn't quite work on the nose, but there is a, a, a lot of structure for uh, the geometry of moduli spaces of Calabi out, shifts on Calabi out trifolds, in particular, uh, uh, there, is a, uh, 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 there is an interpretation of, of the moduli problem as a moduli problem not quite for sheaves, but for perverse coherent sheaves. So these are some kind of special complexes on the calabi out trifold uh, called stable pairs. And those guys actually are great, even though they look like more complicated objects that you are uh, trying to parameterize. They're great because for them, there is a wall crossing behavior uh, for the moduli space, depending on the stability condition that you're using. And by varying that wall crossing, the moduli space changes, but changes in a very controlled way. Something gets blown up, something gets blown down. You can actually say what's happening with the topology. And you can vary the stability condition, check the wall crossing, go all the way to the uh, limiting stability condition at infinity, and then get a moduli problem uh, uh, whose topology uniquely reconstructs the topology of the original moduli problem. It's a different moduli problem now, but whose topology you can actually compute by some other technique. And uh, so in, in the unramified or tamely ramified case, we follow this strategy too, up to this point. And then the question is, what technique do you use to compute the topology for the 
stable pair theory in the limiting stability condition. And in the tamely ramified or the non-ramified case, we used gauge theory in four dimensions. So there is some physics duality called geometric engineering, which relates these stable pairs on Coabial trifolds to supersymmetric gauge theories on the plane. And there is a whole theory of Nekrasov and Okonkov who computes the partition functions for those theories and it gives you the answer. And then you go back through the wall crossing and you get the answer for the wild character varieties. Unfortunately, this doesn't quite, I mean, you still have the duality with gauge theory in this case, in the wildly ramified case, uh, but it doesn't quite work because the gauge theory problem that you get is super complicated. It's essentially as complicated as the problem you started with here. So you need some other duality, and uh, the duality we use is a duality with chern simons theory, which reduces the problem to a problem <coughs> for computing knot invariants for torus knots or torus links. And that problem actually has been solved, so then you can extract the formulas. And so this is the strategy, and let me just say the, the so for, for people who are more physically, physically inclined, uh, what are the, 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 the the transformations. So these are just the mathematical tools that one needs to go from one box to the next. Uh, so the first transformation is the wild non-abelian Hodge correspondence uh, and uh, something really amazing, which is the P equals W conjecture. Uh, so that's what we need to compute, convert this topology into reasonable topology here. The next one is really uh, the main thrust of our work. This is what our paper is about, understand how the spectral correspondence in the wall crossing formulas convert this moduli problem for irregular parabolic Higgs bundles to a moduli problem for uh, shifts on a Coabial trifold or stable pairs on a Coabial trifold. For, for the stable pairs theory, you need something that came from physics, which is called the Gopa Kumar Waffa expansion, uh, which now, well, at the time we were writing the paper, was still a conjectural procedure, but now it's actually a theorem of uh, Davison and Swinehart. Um, and, uh, and then to, to get to the, uh, the knot invariants, you need uh, uh, some duality with chern simons theory, uh, which uh, um, in mathematics is, uh, uh, is captured by a version of the oblomkov shandek conjecture. So these are the, the mathematical ingredients, and they all have physics names. Um, uh, which I'm going to write in a moment. But what this, these procedures, these, these, translate, these dictionaries achieve for you, they convert the mixed Poincaré polynomial on the wild character variety into a perverse Poincaré polynomial for the module of parabolic Higgs bundles. And then the spectral correspondence and the wall crossing converts the perverse Poincaré polynomial for some generating function for refined Donaldson-Thomas invariants on the Calabial trifold. The Gopa Kumar Waffa expansion converts that into a generating function for refined Pandharipande Thomas invariants. And then the Oblonk of Schende conjecture, in fact, it's a covered version of the Oblonk of Schende conjecture, converts that for a generating function of covered link invariants. <coughs> and as I said, these procedures for going from one box to the next, they have physics names. And uh, the generating functions, they are actually partition functions in some physical theories. So the, the generating function for Donaldson-Thomas invariance, for the refined Donaldson-Thomas invariance, uh, it's uh, the counting function for the supersymmetric systems of D0, D2 brains on the Calabial trifold. The Gopa Kumar Waffa expansion re rewrites this as a counting function for D0, D2, D6 bound state brains. And uh, the Covert link invariants are refined Chern Simons invariants in Chern Simons theory, in quantum Chern Simons theory. So there is a lot of um, uh, technology involved in all of these things. Uh, and that's why the formulas that come out are big. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you do get actually closed formulas. Um, okay, so here is what we do. The main thing we want to study are these moduli spaces of algebraic meromorphic corrections of rank R. So I'm going to fix my structure group to be GLR. It, otherwise, you know, the, 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 the theory becomes with an extra level of complexity. I mean, you can do everything, but it's just the formulas become much more complicated. 
Um, so we are looking at Rankar algebraic connections on a curve, and for simplicity, I'm going to allow a single point to be a pole. I mean, nothing really requires that. It just uh, the notation becomes simpler. So connections with a single pole at one point, and I'm going to allow these connections to have irregular singularities. So uh, I'll fix the type of the irregular singularities. So this is done by taking a curve, a point, and some data that controls the type of the irregular singularity of a connection. Uh, it's called an irregular type. And what it is, it's a Laurent tail. It's a Laurent polynomial of non-positive degree. In fact, uh, the degrees go from n minus 1 to k, uh, to minus, one, minus 2. And the coefficients of that polynomial are going to be matrices. And uh, they're going to be diagonal matrices. Um, so they're going to be in the Cartan algebra of GLR. So, so a key is this uh, diagonal matrices? It is the diagonal matrices, yeah. Uh, um, and um, so, so we'll fix this data once and for all. T is the torus? T is the torus. Well, T is the Cartan algebra. Uh, so. Uh, yeah, so, so, so the regular type is fixed up to gauge equivalence. Uh, and so what you are considering now is the moduli problem for rank R, flat meromorphic connections on CP with a single pole of order N, uh, whose locally, which is locally gauge equivalent, uh, the, 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 the Laurent expansion of your connection matrix at the pole is locally gauge equivalent to the derivative of this Laurent polynomial plus a residue plus homomorphic terms. Yeah, so, so there is a theorem, a classical theorem in, uh, in the theory of, uh, of uh, linear differential equations in one variable, which says that any uh, connection with irregular singularity can be uh, gauged to something like that uh, with, with diagonal coefficients. Uh, uh, which all commute, yeah. Uh, diagonal coefficients in, a, in the torus, which all commute. Uh, but in order to do that, you need to allow gauge transformations with coefficients in pure iso series. The order of the pure iso series will be, the, you know, the order of the root in the, in the pure iso uh, parameter will be, uh, will be bounded for each moduli problem, but will jump from a, a problem to problem. Yeah, geometrically they become isomorphic on a, on a finite cover. Yeah. But so, so I'm going to, you know, look with, with things for which you can actually gauge them directly with no roots uh, uh, to this form. Uh, and then look at the moduli space. And that moduli space actually has a Betty incarnation. So there is a Riemann-Hilbert correspondence for connections with irregular singularities. And there is a version of, uh, uh, of so there is a moduli space of representations of the fundamental group of the curve minus the point with constrained topological data uh, on, uh, on, uh, uh, on the link of the, of the singularity, uh, which really is analytically isomorphic to this moduli space of connections. So it's kind of complicated to explain what it is. I'm not going to. This is the work of Phil Boach. Uh, but I'm saying there is a moduli space. So in fact, there is a, so this moduli space of connections is, of course, uh, a complex algebraic variety, which is uh, quasi-projective, but it's not affine in any way. The Betty version is affine. It's analytically isomorphic, but not algebraically isomorphic, and it is affine. Uh, and you can define it purely uh, in terms of data uh, constraining the representations uh, uh, by using this uh, Laurent tail irregular type. And you need one more, more piece of topological data. This M guy is the formal monodromy. Uh, the formal local monodromy of your connection. So this is an, uh, a matrix uh, which, is, uh, which belongs to the centralizer of the coefficients of, uh, of our Laurent tail. Um, <clears throat> so this, all those irregular singularities with the formal change of variables, you can make them regular. Uh, and you can, and the, 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 the corresponding regular connection 
is a topological invariant of the irregular connection, and its monodromy is an invariant. So that's this this uh, this M guy, this operator around the puncture is the the monodromy for the associated formal regular connection to all those regular connections. It does. So I'm, I'm going to say, okay. So, so first remark, which goes back to Phil Bouch, is without loss of generality, you may assume that this group of, uh, of, of the, the centralizer of the coefficients of your Laurent tail is a product of, uh, it's a block diagonal group. It's a product of, uh, of GLMs uh, sitting on the diagonal in your GLR. So the data really that, uh, 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 that you need to specify, it's a partition of R. Uh, into the sizes of those blocks. Um, and uh, I'm going to make assumptions, regularity assumptions. So these are not going to be completely general moduli spaces of irregular connections. These are going to be generic moduli spaces of irregular connections. Uh, so these are the genericity assumptions. The centralizer of the coefficients of the Laurent tail, uh, I will require that it's actually completely determined by the centralizer of the leading coefficient, the one that's the higher order pole, the highest order pole. Um, and um, so the, the, all those guys, the centralizer of the collection of guys is equal to the centralizer of the leading guy. And uh, the formal monodromy is uh, conjugation equivalent to a block diagonal matrix. And my genericity assumption is going to be that the uh, eigenvalues for the blocks, so these are scalar guys, that these eigenvalues are distinct. So this is really a generic uh, 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 component of this moduli space of, of, of irregular connections. And I'm always going to make... Hmm? Global monodromy is semi-simple? The global monodromy uh, uh, for these guys is not going to be necessarily semi-simple. It would depend on, on... I mean, you know, there will be semi-stable connections. And for them, the global monodromy will not be semi-simple. It will have a unipotent part. But for the stable guys, of course, it will be semi-stable. Uh, <coughs> all right, so I'm making these assumptions. And uh, so Phil Bouch actually constructed the moduli space uh, 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 with this given irregular type and this given formal monodromy uh, by quasi-Hamiltonian reduction. And under my genericity assumption, uh, so the eigenvalues are different, non-resonant, uh, this variety is actually smooth. It's uh, algebraic symplectic. It's uh, uh, quasi-projective, and this is the dimension. The dimension depends on the partition, on the genus, and on the order of the pole. And is the order of the pole. <clears throat> So the partition was given by the formal monodromy, remember. It was the blocks in the formal monodromy, or equivalently by the, the centralizer of the irregular type. Okay, so this is some symplectic leaf in the moduli space of all irregular uh, 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 connections, which is Poisson, and it's fixed by the data I, uh, uh, I prescribed, and it's a symplectic leaf of maximal dimension. That's the genericity assumption. <clears throat> okay, so the, the project is to understand what the topology of this guy is, and what we really want to compute is its Euler characteristic is a minimum, or maybe the Poincaré polynomial. And for these physics dualities and geometric dualities considerations, it actually turns out that it's better to look at the refinement of the Poincaré polynomial. Um, so this is a quasi-projective smooth variety, but it's non-compact. So the, the cohomology has a mixed coach structure, in particular, it has a weight filtration. So we are going to ignore the Hodge filtration, but keep the weight filtration. And we will refine the Poincaré polynomial by introducing a second grading variable, which uh, uh, keeps uh, 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 track of the weights. Uh, and we are going to write a polynomial in two variables, u and v. Uh, one variable, v, is going to label the cohomological degree. Uh, and the other variable is going to label the weight in the graded pieces of the weight filtration in each cohomological degree. 
And again, for, for purposes of, uh, uh, of uh, writing transformation formulas that behave well with respect to the dualities, it's more convenient to, to take that variable to be a square root of a formal variable. Okay, but this is the mixed Poincaré polynomial, right? I mean, you can take this weight refinement of the Poincaré polynomial for any variety. Um, and we would want to compute this guy. That's the goal. In particular, if you know this, you know the Poincaré polynomial, you know the Euler characteristic, you know the Betty numbers, you know everything. Uh, <clears throat> now, the wild non abelian Hodge correspondence, uh, it's an um, uh, analytic process which converts the problem for understanding irregular flat connections on, on a Keller manifold, in fact, to the problem for understanding Higgs bundles with irregular singularities on the same Keller manifold. The moduli spaces are not analytically isomorphic, they are not algebraically isomorphic, but they are topologically isomorphic. So if you are only interested in topology, then this is a permissible operation. So if you want to understand the Betty numbers of the moduli of irregular flat connections, you look at the corresponding problem for irregular Higgs bundles, they has the same, the moduli space has the same Betty numbers. The problem is that I, I made my life complicated because I said, let's not look at the Poincaré polynomial, but let's look at the mixed Poincaré polynomial, which remembers about the weight filtration. And of course, the weight filtration knows about the algebraic structure or the analytic structure because it knows about the, the way we try to compactify our variety. So if I forget the analytic or the algebraic structure and just look at the underlying topology, I, I won't be able to see the weight filtration. So the non abelian Hodge correspondence is not quite enough in order to say that the mixed Poincaré polynomial of the irregular flat connections will be some, something on the irregular Higgs bundles. But the missing ingredient is uh, provided by this mysterious and very beautiful uh, 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 P equals W correspondence uh, proposed by the Cataldo, Jose, and Migliorini, which says that the weight filtration on the character variety, on the homology of the character variety, is the perverse Lerais filtration on the cohomology of the moduli of Higgs bundles. So this is the character variety. So this is the affine algebraic structure. Right, yeah, that's the Betty one. And this is just the, the, the Higgs one, the Dobo one. Um, and so the claim is that the steps in the weight filtration in the cohomology for the character variety are the same as the steps in the Lyrae filtration, or the perverse Lyrae filtration, for, uh, uh, um, uh, for the Hitchin map, which is a uh, uh, vibration on the moduli of Higgs bundles by Lagrangian abelian varieties. So uh, the Lerais spectral sequence has a limiting filtration, and if you take the Lerais spectral sequence for intersection cohomologies, then you get a limiting filtration, which is this perverse Lerais filtration. And so the, 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 the correspondence, the conjecture of the Cataldo, Jose, and Miglerini is that these two filtrations agree. The, this variety and this variety are topologically the same, but not algebraically or analytically. Each of them, for their own algebraic structure, has a filtration. This one comes from Hodge theory. This one comes from the Hitchin map and the Lerais spectral sequence. And the claim is that those two agree. <coughs> and um, so, so for our particular problem, which is the, the, the wild character variety, this is still a conjecture. It hasn't been proven. So the Cataldo, Jose, and Migliorini, they formulated this conjecture in the unramified case and proved it for GO2. Uh, and this is probably the only case in which it has been proven for this setup. Uh, okay. I mean, there are people here who have proven instances of this uh, in other setups, so I'm not going to talk more about that. Uh, okay, so here is what we want to do. Uh, we want to compute that mixed Poincaré polynomial, and it turns out that you can write a formula, at least a conjectural formula for it, 
uh, uh, partially uh, by using some combinatorial creature. So here is a, 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 a rational function in two variables z and w. Uh, it's uh, in, in, it, in fact it's, uh, uh, it's a form of series in uh, infinitely many variables x that are written here. Uh, so we call it the Hauselmer app and Wong partition function. Uh, so it's a sum over partitions of a product of two things. Uh, so it goes over all Jung diagrams of size R. Uh, and it's a product of two things. One is a rational function, uh, which you can write in terms of the Jung diagram. And the other is the modified McDonald polynomial corresponding to that Jung diagram. So this rational function, omega, you see it depends on the Jung diagram lambda, on the genus, and on the order of the pole. Uh, this is, uh, in the literature, in the combinatorial literature, it has a name. It's called uh, the modified Hooke polynomial. Uh, and as you see, it's an explicit expression uh, of uh, uh, ratios depending on the boxes inside the, the Jung diagram. So you have two variables, z and w. You have monomials on those variables, or some simple polynomials, differences of monomials raised to a power. And the powers of those monomials are either the arm length or the hook length of the box in the Jung diagram. Um, and the only way, so L is the, the leg length, and uh, A is the arm length of the box. And uh, the only way in which the genus enters this formula is through this power, 2g. Um, okay, so this is the um, this is the uh, uh, the modified Hooke polynomial. Uh, the other guy is the modified McDonald polynomial. It depends on an infinite sequence of formal variables, which is going to label the representations of the symmetric groups. Um, and um, okay, I don't know how I'm doing with time. I have half an hour? Uh, okay. Maybe I'll skip this. I'm not going to explain the modified McDonald polynomial. So uh, it's an explicit combinatorial formula depending on the Yun diagram again. Um, it, uh, uh, it actually has a geometric interpretation. Uh, it is um, uh, uh, polynomial that computes the equivariant Hirzebruch genus of the Hilbert scheme of the isospectral Hilbert scheme of points of the plane for the action of the torus. So I was going to explain that, but I'm not going <clears throat> Okay, so there are some expressions. You see they are explicit, combinatorial, uh, uh, that give you this partition function. And uh, you can reorganize that partition function by taking its logarithm, a uh, uh, formal platistic logarithm in the variables x, and expanding in a uh, power series uh, with respect to the monomials in the variable x, labeled by partitions again. And so if you normalize the coefficients, you get some new polynomials depending on partitions mu, the order of the pole n, and they are polynomials in z to the k and w to the k. They're just the coefficients in this expansion. And then the conjecture that Hosel, Marep, and Wonk uh, proposed was that the weighted, uh, the mixed Poincaré polynomial of the irregular character variety uh, is in the case when the formal monodromy type uh, um, is uh, um, um, uh, is just of type 1, 1, 1, 1, then it is just correspond to this partition, 1, 1, 1, 1, and, and then you have a slight change of variables between the counting variables on the character variety and counting variables in this combinatorial expression. So they proposed it, so, yeah, so actually, they proposed it and they, this is what they proved. Uh, they proved it for the partition 1, 1, 1, 1. Uh, but they proposed it for any partition, so I should have put here the partition mu corresponding to the regular formal monodromy. And yeah, I mean, so the, 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 they, they proved the theorem uh, for, uh, um, 
for the V equals 1 specialization. So this is like taking in the Poincaré polynomial uh, not the alternating sum of the Betty numbers, but the sum of the Betty numbers. But you still keep the information about the weights. Okay, so what we are going to do is we are actually going to extend this formula by allowing arbitrary partitions here uh, uh, because we want to have regular monodromies with blocks on the diagonal, not blocks of size 1. Um, and uh, so we'll get an, an analogous formula and then we'll verify it. Uh, so it will specialize to this one, but it will also uh, we'll, we'll be able to check it in some special cases. Okay, uh, as I said, the way the computation is done at the end of the day is by computing knot invariance or link invariance. So this is based on a conjecture that Shen, that Truman, and Zaslo made. Um, so, uh, uh, so here is the conjecture. Suppose that you, have, you are in the plane and you have a rational plane curve with a singular, single singular point, nu, and you project the plane to one of the coordinate axes. Um, then you can view this curve as a spectral curve, right? It sits in a line bundle over the affine line, so you can think about it as being a spectral curve uh, for some Higgs bundle uh, on P1 with a poet infinity. And uh, then you can use the non-abelian Hodge correspondence to identify the symplectic leaf containing the compactified Jacobian of that spectral curve uh, with the wild character variety uh, and you can express that wild character variety entirely in terms of, uh, 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 of the curve and in fact entirely in terms of the link of the singularity of the curve. It has only one singularity. Uh, and so it's a wild character variety parameterizing Stokes data at infinity for those Higgs bundles uh, with this particular spectral curve. And um, so their conjecture they made is that if you take the link of the singular point uh, and you write uh, the knot invariant for that link, which is the Homfli polynomial, and you take the central coefficient, so this, this Homfli polynomial is a Laurent polynomial symmetrically organized around zero, take the coefficient, uh, 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 not, around, not around zero, around some, some uh, degree, take the coefficient, uh, uh, this degree is de determined by the Milner number. So take the coefficient, which is the coefficient of that, of that central degree, then that guy, they conjectured, is the mixed Poincaré polynomial of the character variety, now specialized at minus one. So it computes the Euler characteristic, but with carrying the uh, information of the weights. And there is a normalizing factor, which also you need to know, you need to remember how many branches your curve has at the, uh, at the singular point. So this is the conjecture. The conjecture is that that coefficient in the Humphrey polynomial is equal to the mixed Poincaré polynomial. And uh, I say it's a conjecture uh, uh, because uh, uh, at the time I wrote the slides, it was a conjecture. Uh, but uh, it is actually now proven. Uh, it is a theorem in, uh, of Shende, Truman, Williams, and Zaslo. Uh, <clears throat> so this part is actually rigorous. Uh, but again, notice it's only about the uh, uh, minus one specialization, uh, alternating sum in the cohomological degree. So we'll need to refine that a little bit to get the actual Poincaré polynomial. So we'll need a colored version of this conjecture, which I'll, I'll state. Okay. Yeah, so I, I actually said, said it. Yeah, we need a, a, a refinement and a colored version of this conjecture. Um, so this, you know, this conjecture was a, 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 a not version of, a, of some work of Oblonkov and Rasmussen and Schende. Uh, um, and then there was a physical interpretation of that by Diakonesco, Hua, and Soibelman. Uh, uh, which, which use the, the, the stable pair theory of the conifold. And we'll need to, to, to cover all this. We need to frame all the knots appropriately in order to get uh, uh, the functions that we uh, care about. Okay, so here is the moduli problem for irregular parabolic Higgs bundles that, that you end up uh, 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 um, 
width that you have to understand. You have a curve with a single mark point. Uh, you have a divisor, a uh, power divisor for your Higgs fields, which will be just n times the point. Uh, we'll look at a line bundle, uh, which is going to be the canonical class of the curve twisted by that power divisor. And uh, we'll have to uh, prescribe the residues of the Higgs field uh, uh, at, uh, sorry, the, the Laurent tails of the Higgs field at, uh, uh, at the pole. Uh, at least the eigenvalues of the Laurent tails. So for this, we'll just fix L sections of the line bundle restricted to that non-reduced fat point. And so you're looking at a moduli problem consisting of a vector bundle, uh, 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 a filtration of that vector bundle restricted on the non-reduced divisor, um, filtration by vector sub-bundles on the, on the non-reduced scheme, uh, the successive quotients are vector bundles. Uh, and then there is a Higgs field with coefficients in M, because it has a power of order N, which preserves that filtration and has the property that uh, the associated gradient with respect to the parabolic filtration uh, is, uh, 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 is scalar. It, it, it has uh, uh, this uh, uh, expansion uh, uh, with a single eigenvalue psi i. And of course, in order to, to, to form the moduli problem, talk about stability, you need to fix some collection of parabolic weights uh, for the steps of the parabolic filtration. So this will be real numbers, and my normalization is that they are strictly ordered between 0 and 1 decreasingly. OK, so that's the moduli problem. Uh, uh, you can impose parabolic stability conditions with that uh, 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 parabolic chunk class depending on the parabolic weights. And um, so you get a moduli space, a moduli stack of semi stable parabolic Higgs bundles with these fixed uh, Laurent tails or, or associated graded for the Laurent tails. Um, and um, uh, it actually depends on discrete data. The discrete data. Uh, is the degree of the underlying vector bundle. Uh, there is a partition, which is the, uh, uh, the dimension that the, the associated graded pieces for the parabolic filtration. Uh, and then there are continuous guys, which are the parabolic weights and these eigenvalues. And um, so it turns out that if you choose the weights generically, everything uh, semi-stable is stable, uh, and the moduli space uh, uh, is just a gerb. There is only one automorphism for each parabolic bundle, which is a scaling, and it's a gerb over a coarse moduli space. So it's fairly easy to understand the topology in, in this generic weights case. But in general, you know, it's, it's going to be more complicated. Okay, now what we do, we need to convert this to Calabi-Aus. So what we want to do is we want to construct a homomorphic symplectic surface. It's going to depend on the Laurent tails for my Higgs bundles. Uh, and we want to do it in such a way that this homomorphic symplectic surface will have a bridge stability condition single out on it, and the moduli stack a bridge stable spectral sheaves on that homomorphic symplectic surface. So this will be like line bundles on curves, compact curves sitting inside that homomorphic symplectic surface it's going to be the moduli stack of these irregular parabolic Higgs bundles. So that's what we want to do. And uh, in fact, this surface was known before. It was proposed by Konsevich and Soibelman. Um, uh, and they actually uh, uh, constructed the surface and showed that, showed part of this isomorphism, showed that the Hitchin base for this moduli of Higgs bundles is isomorphic to a linear system of compact curves on that homomorphic symplectic surface. Um, and uh, Seward Zabo actually analyzed this problem and managed to prove this isomorphism generically on the moduli space. Uh, 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 but uh, so, so for spectral curves which are smooth. But his proof doesn't work in general. So in fact, our main theorem is to prove this in complete generality with the stacky structure and with the singularities. Uh, because you need that once you start converting to, to the formulas to the, uh, uh, the Calabi-Aut trifolds. 
Okay, so here is the construction of the surface. Uh, you take the total space of the line bundle M. Remember, we had the line bundle M, which was the canonical class twisted by the divisor D. And we had a bunch of uh, uh, zero-dimensional subschemes uh, in the total space of the line bundle M. These were the images of the non-reduced scheme D into the total space of M restricted to D by these sections that were the eigenvalues of the, of the Laurent tails of, of the Higgs bundles. M, M was the line bundle over the curve C. Oh. That was just the canonical class twisted by N times the point. Yeah. So the total space of the canonical class is symplectic. The total space of the canonical class twisted by the divisor is not. Uh, but we have these zero dimensional subschemes. We are going to blow them up. And then the claim is that there is an effective anti canonical divisor on this surface, the psi. And you can throw out the support of that effective anti-canonical divisor, and what's left is going to be symplectic. Uh, and that effective anti-canonical divisor, you can write it down explicitly. It is the fiber uh, of the line bundle passing through the, uh, uh, through the given point, so the fiber over P. And then you need to take the sum of all exceptional divisors uh, that you get from uh, blowing up these sections you know, these are non-reduced schemes, so when you blow up, you get many components. You get all of them, so one for each block, uh, uh, one group for each block, and, and then for each block, you get N. Um, uh, and you throw out all of them except for the last one. You keep the last one. So this is the anti-canonical divisor. Uh, and then uh, for a given partition, you get a linear system of curves, which is R times the zero section, minus the multiples given by the partition of the uh, uh, exceptional divisors. And that linear system turns out to be non-empty and consists only of compact curves on this non-compact symplectic surface. And they're all R-sheeted covers of C. I'm sorry, I'm confused. So M was a surface, right? Was M is a surface. We blew up that surface in a bunch of non-reduced points. No, points. Oh, oh, this D was a zero-dimensional scheme. It was n times a point in the base curve. So, so you just take that n times a point in the base curve and you lift it to a zero-dimensional subscheme inside the surface, M. So, so you blow up zeros of sections? No, no, you just blow up the images of that section. This, this gives you the image of this non-reduced scheme gives you a zero-dimensional subscheme inside M. And you blow up that zero-dimensional subscheme. That which one? That n. Uh, that n, yeah. That n was the, the order of the pole. Yeah, yeah. So these are just fat points on the surface. Uh, uh, let me. Maybe I can. Do we have chalk? We have chalk. So we had the point P. This is the curve C. This is M. You have the fiber over M, uh, and you know. There is a fattening of this point, and we are looking at Higgs bundles for which the eigenvalues for the associated graded pieces of, of the Laurent tails of those Higgs bundles over this fattening are just some lifts of this fattened point here, 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 here. Uh, and uh, so, so this looks like this point uh, with uh, tangent directions which are transversal to this fiber. Uh, to, to to higher orders, to the order of the multiplicity of the, uh, 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 of the, the, the size of the weight filtration. And you just need to blow up these guys. And so, in fact, I have a picture. Uh, yeah. So this is what happens when you blow them up. You get just chains of rational curves, uh, n for each guy, because these are subschemes of length n. Uh, and, um, and so this anti-canonical divisor, it consisted of this curve and all those guys, well, you know, the reduced anti-canonical divisor consisted of this curve and all those guys except for the last one. Is this surface S smooth? 
The surfaces is smooth, yeah. The, we started with a smooth surface. This, in fact, this blow ups you can do iteratively at smooth points only. So the smooth surface T is smooth and the surface S is just the complement of a bunch of curves on a smooth surface. So the surface S is smooth. Uh, it maps back to, 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 to the curve. The generic fiber is still aligned, but now notice what happens with the fiber over zero, uh, the fiber over the point P. It's just the union of all those curves. So it's a disconnected guy, which is uh, L copies of, of the line. So it's, um, uh, it's not quite a, you know, it's not a line bundle, right? I mean, it, 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 it's a family of lines that specializes to N disconnected, L disconnected copies of a line. And um, now for any collection of real numbers, B1, beta 1 through beta L, you can actually write a B field on that symplectic surface. Uh, it's compactly supported B field, uh, and uh, it has only non-zero periods on these last divisors, and uh, uh, the periods are given by the numbers beta i. And then this defines a stability condition, a bridge on stability condition on the surface. The slope function is, is written here. It's the Euler characteristic of a shift, and then evaluate the beta B field on the churn character of the shift, divide by the rank. And, um, uh, you know, the rank is understood intelligently as, as uh, you know, the shift is supposed to be finite over the base curve and the rank is just the length uh, of uh, that finite morphism. And so this is the slope and you get a moduli problem for beta stable uh, spectral data. And the theorem is that the moduli stack of beta stable sheaves is the moduli stack of Higgs bundles where uh, the, the parabolic weights are just defining the coefficients of that B field, the periods of that B field. And the degree uh, uh, is uh, related to the Euler characteristic by Arima Rock shift. So that's, uh, that's the theorem. And um, it works in full generality for any curve and any number of poles. Um, Sorry, in the heart? Say it again? In the heart? In the heart? Right, of the stability condition. Yeah, yeah, these are all in the heart because they're stable guys. Seven stable guys. So they're all in the heart of the stability condition. <clears throat> okay, now the Kawabi L3 fault, as I said, is boring. It's just the product of this surface with the line. Uh, uh, but the moduli problem you're going to solve on that Kawabe trifold is actually interesting. So the moduli pro problem for spectral data uh, now becomes, uh, uh, sorry, this should say y, yxi. So you can now look at the moduli problem of bridge on stable shifts on the Kawabe trifold and it is the moduli problem for the spectral data across the line because everything, these are compactly supported guys, so they project to, to points inside the line. Um, so it doesn't change the topology much. Uh, um, it, it is uh, a moduli problem with the same topology. Um, but what's interesting is that if you rewrite this moduli problem for coherent shifts on the Kawabe L3 fold by a Gopakumar Waffa expansion, to a moduli problem of stable pairs upon Haripan de Thomas. So those are going to be complexes that have two terms, the structure sheaf and some other sheaf on, on the Kawabe L3 fold, which is compactly supported. And the morphism has the property that uh, its first chunk class is uh, our spectral curve, and the Euler characteristic is the same. Uh, and this map is generically subjective. And so, so it's clear how to convert one geometric data to the other. What's interesting is that this has a different, different stability uh, theory. And uh, so you can take for these guys, uh, uh, not the Euler characteristic, which is the, the, the virtual number of pairs, but you can take the virtual Poincare polynomial uh, 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 which is the refinement, kulcevich soberman refinement of the stable pair theory. And so this PT of Y 
will be just the virtual Poincare polynomial of the moduli space of such pairs. And then you can put all of those into a generating function for all possible discrete invariants over all possible partitions. And uh, we want to now compute that generating function. So that generating function by the Gopa Kumar Fafa expansion uh, is uh, 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 formally equivalent to the generating function uh, for the moduli of Higgs bundles. So you can, uh, um, uh, 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 if you understand it, you can understand what we wanted to understand, the way the, the mixed Poincare polynomial. Uh, so we now want to compute that one. And uh, Okay, so, so we want to compute this uh, uh, generating function for the refined stable pair theory of the Kawabe out trifold. Uh, and to do it, uh, we'll actually look at a special case where the curve is P1, we have a single mark point, and we are going to use the duality with Chern-Simons theory and we're going to use localization. We're going to use the, the torus action fixing that point. Uh, so you get a formula at the end which makes sense without this assumption. Uh, and the general formula that you get actually specializes to the Hosea rep wong formula. So I think it's a strong indication that the formula is correct without any assumptions. But in order to derive the formula, we need to make the assumptions because we are using localization. Okay. So now you take this virtual localization of Nekrasov, Okunkov, and Moulik and um, use it to localize the computation for the stable pair theory to the curves which are fixed under the torus action. And there are finitely many of them in the surface uh, S. Uh, and in fact, you know, in this case, you should be able to compute the whole thing uh, by virtual localization. It's just very hard. So we could only do it in some very limited special cases. Uh, but the curves that you get, you can write them down explicitly. They look like that in our surface. They are all tangent to high order to the zero section at the point where the pole is prescribed. Uh, they are all copies of P1, uh, and they all intersect uh, the uh, last component of the exceptional divisor at one point. Uh, and uh, locally, so this curve, notice, has a singularity at the origin. So it looks exactly like one of those Shende truman zaslo curves. Uh, uh, you know, the, the, if you throw away infinity on, the P, on P1, this will be the plane. So this will be literally the Shende truman zaslo situation. Uh, the only new feature here is that this curve is torus invariant. But it's exactly like one of the Shende truman zaslo curves. It has a singularity here. You can uh, look at the singularity. This is how it, it looks like. Uh, uh, it's given by a bunch of cusps. Um, uh, so, sorry, a bunch of well, generalized parabolas with, uh, with, uh, with a slope. And um, now the, the, the oblomkov the framework says that the refined invariants of these singular plane curves uh, uh, are uh, computable in terms of refined invariants of torus links of type L, n minus 2 times L. And um, and as I said, this is actually a theorem if you drop refined. So the refinement is something that is not in the Shende, Truman, uh, Will, uh, Williams, and, and Zaslow paper, but shouldn't be that hard to extract from their methods. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, and then once you go to this invariance of torus links, you can actually compute them by uh, using this machinery of Aganagic and Shikirov and Shikirov uh, that comes from refined term Chern Simons theory. So you can actually carry out the computation uh, uh, in the Shikirov framework and get an answer. And then go back, do the Gopakumar Waffa expansion backwards, do the wall crossing, do the P equals W uh, reparameterization, and you get the formula. Uh, okay, so here is the formula. Uh, you don't even want to look at it. Uh, uh, so there are some explicit polynomials. Uh, so these guys, uh, Ws, they are written in terms of little word 
a little bit Richardson coefficients. Uh, these F guys, uh, the P's are the ordinary non-modified McDonald's polynomials. Uh, the F guys are just monomial factors, framing factors corresponding to the Jung diagrams. Uh, and uh, that's it. It is a formula. It gives you the partition function explicitly. And, uh, and then when you go back and, 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 and un, un, unpack everything, this is what you get. You get that this partition function is the expansion of a series whose coefficients are monomials, some normalizing factors, and then exactly the perverse Poincare polynomials of the module I have Higgs bundles that you wanted, which are, by the way, equal by the P equals W conjecture to the mixed Poincare polynomials of the character variety. So this is the conjecture. Um, uh, then, you know, you can specialize uh, uh, in various cases. So we actually took the, uh, uh, the, the conjecture and specialized to V equals 1. So you can specialize V equals 1 and V equals minus 1. At V equals minus 1, you get the Shen de truman zaslow formula. That's not surprising because we used it to get it. But at V equals 1, you actually get the hauser app wonk formula, uh, which is surprising because it looks completely different. In fact, to, to recognize that you get it, we had to to do numerical, uh, 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 I mean, symbolic, symbolic expansions on the computer, but, but you do. Um, and, um, and then we actually checked the conjecture. We proved it, this one and the previous one, uh, for the partition 2, 1, and for orders, poles of order 5 and poles of order 6 on P1 with one point. This is just by doing brutal localization calculations. So in this case, we could do it, and you got the formula. OK, so one very interesting question is, can you do the V equals 1 specialization, the Shen de truman zaslow specialization? Uh, sorry, the, the Hosea-Merep-Wong specialization. Can you, uh, can you do it by counting points on wild character varieties uh, in finite characteristics, the way Hosea-Merep and Wong proved their formula uh, uh, with the partition one, one, one. But now, you know, you have, you have it for arbitrary partitions. Can you do it for arbitrary partitions in their method? And I don't know. So I'm going to stop. Any questions? So you said that for certain stability conditions, Mm -hmm. You get the moduli space of those which less stable objects are just the linear system of the curve on the surface uh, S. No, no, it's, 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 uh, it maps to the linear system of the curve. So the, 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 the objects, they look like uh, uh, torsion sheaves, pure dimensional, pure dimensional one torsion sheaves on the surface, supported on, the, on, that, on curves in that linear system. And uh, their Hilbert polynomial looks like uh, a Hilbert polynomial of a line bundle on, uh -huh. on those curves. But you know you have the moduli of the line bundles, even on the smooth curves, and on right. the singular curves you have things well, which are not. Right. Yeah, no, in this in this case too. Okay. And what are the uh, the wall crossing that you perform? You get... Yeah, you need to you need to take your original stability condition and take the slope to 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 be the degenerate slope to go to infinity. That's, that's the, the regime in which you get the, the Higgs moduli space. And so the, 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 the partition function, the, you know, the generating function for the uh, refined uh, uh, Pantcari Pantcari Thomas invariance, it, it jumps when you cross chambers. So you need to, to, to check uh, uh, what the jumps are. In fact, in this case, there is only one jump, so it's not because it's, yeah, yeah. In this case, there is only one jump. In, in the same case, there are many jumps. Uh, but in the same case, you know, the residue could be much more complicated. Here we fix these regular blocks. Uh, so in this case, there, there, there isn't much of a, of a wall crossing that's happening. Any other questions? Well, thank you very much.